All right, so this is about three days delayed, and for that I apologize, but no more delay. Let's get right into it. Karani James and Steven Gardner, both with impressive displays in Bermuda. Nothing that's going to jump off the page once we get into the thick of this track and field season, but something just to make note of now as we continue to follow their progress and the entire trajectory of this season as a whole. So there was a lot of interesting things that happened at this Bermuda meet over the weekend on Saturday, but me as a 400 meter fan, I felt like this would probably be the best thing for me to talk about because again, most people are talking about Jerome Blake's upset win in the 100 over Noah Lyles and Arian Knighton. And then you got Tiana Daniels beating Gabby Thomas in the women's 100. And the times in those events, mind you, were very, very slow given the very ridiculous headwind. It was like around five meters per second on average when you consider the events. But, you know, that was also present in Stephen Gardner's 200 and Karani James's 400, not necessarily in terms of legalities, because that's not taken into account in the full lap sprint, but we'll get to that later. Anyways, Stephen Gardner, we've talked about him a couple times before. He was the guy who thwarted my end-all, be-all world record prediction for Michael Norman at the Olympics 400. My goodness. <laughs> You got you guys gotta admit, I, I, I was on to a little something there. But anyways, Gardner, he's always been the most effortless of all runners when you consider four hundred meter sprinters. But today he ran a two hundred, not today, three days ago. <laughs> he ran the two hundred and it wasn't what you'd call effortless, but his relative effortlessness, I'd say, was definitely on display because you look at that race, he was behind at the one hundred meter mark with just 100 meters to go. He was, in fact, in the very back of the field, but he caught all of them and won in 20.79, not his fastest time on the season. In fact, about a full second slower than his 200-meter PB. But still, his finish, it's, it's not easy to do in the headwind when you're behind and when you're up against it. And when you're a tall sprinter, well... He has the advantage in terms of the finish, but in the 200, you've also got to have raw sprinting speed and the start, which is obviously his weakest point of that race, which is why he's more of a 400-meter runner than a 200-meter runner, because some proficient 400-meter runners like Michael Johnson, most notably Michael Johnson, <laughs> they, they, they had that impressive 200-meter sprinting start, Hence his 19.32 former world record. But Stephen Gardner, he's a completely different athlete. He relies more on his floating abilities, which is perhaps his most impressive part of the 400 meters, that in between 100 and 200 meter mark where he really starts to set himself up for the finish, which he almost always is unmatched nowadays, especially when you consider the fact that he is now a full-fledged veteran at this stage of his track career. But yeah, in good, good win for Steven Gardner. He's, he's shown us a lot of promise this season. I'm not going to make any world record predictions. I've learned from my previous mistakes. But considering he broke the world indoor 300 meter record at 31.56, and that this run, ironically, was only an average 200 meter pace of 0.25 slower than that in the whipping headwinds, I think... I think we're due to see some pretty impressive times this season from Stephen Gardner. Now, Karani James on the other side of the spectrum. Yet, yet again, the same event. 400 meters, we're sticking in 400 land. James actually ran the 400, and I was just taking a little look-see at this race at the very end on the YouTube clip from World Athletics. You know, the 15-second clip that you guys love to rave about in the comments section about just how perfect and flawless the media's coverage of track and field has been. Anyways, Karani James, you could tell that he was fighting that headwind in the home straight as well, but to open in 45-63, it's not, again, just like Gardner's 20.79, it's nothing that's going to jump off the table, but what it does it is it sets him up for future success. You know, you never want to open with a ridiculous time because when it gets to the big buck races, you're not going to have anything left in the tank, and that's 
partially what we saw with Norman back in 2019. He opened in 43-45. All of us thought, that world record is history. But no, no. He got injured mid-season and just couldn't finish. It was it was sad to see happen, but that's just the reality of the game. Track takes a lot out of you, especially when you're a sprinter. Or any athlete for that case, but we're talking sprinters here. But either way, Karani James and Steven Gardner, lots to be impressed about. Not really a lot to consider at this stage of the game, just something to keep a watchful eye on, right? Because you can only tell so much based on what little sample size that you've seen so far. So I'm probably going to leave it here. But let me know what you guys think down below. If you have any thoughts at all, feel free to leave them and subscribe for more track content and content in general. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and peace.